You know what? How many of you remember? I look around. Everybody pretty much remembers hee haw, don't they? Hee haw, hee 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 haw haw, hee 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 haw haw. Remember watching hee haw? Now there was a couple of jingles or songs that, that was periodic. It, 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 I might not see here one each week, but it was enough that people would get get the gist out. I don't sing both of them to you. Uh, first one's. Uh, where, oh, where are you tonight? Why did you leave me here all alone? I searched the world. Yeah, they, I searched the world over and thought I found true love, but you met another and you are gone. Something to that effect. Now, if the, the person singing that, that, that could be a little depressing in itself. Then there was another one. Gloom, despair, and agony on me. Deep, dark depression, excessive misery. If it weren't for bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. Gloom, despair, and agony on me. I remember that. You know, that's a humorous description of something that's not humorous, especially with people suffering or experiencing depression. Personally, I've been dealing with depression for the last three years. Now, those of you that dealt with it your whole life, you're like, oh, you wish I only had to deal with it for 30 years. So, you know. I don't want to make, I don't want to downplay anybody's depression problems. It's going to be much more severe than mine. But I've been dealing with it. I've been dealing with it. And, I'm, and that's the reason I, I debated on using the word deal or live. I'd rather deal with it and live with it. Living with it is a little bit of an acceptance kind of thing. That's, some situations you may have to accept it. But I'm dealing with it. I'm trying to deal with it the best way I know how. You know, I want to, again, shed some light on how I am dealing with it. And let me say this. This is not medical advice. And it's in no way saying you should not seek professional help if you need professional help. So far, I haven't gotten to that point. But I, I've thought about it. I've thought about it. Do I need to talk to a professional? Uh, you know, there's people that have chemical imbalances. That are maybe genetically, uh, you know, it's in their genetics, that family history of it. And, 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 and you know, so, so there's people that need to probably get professional help. But I'm not, you know, this is not medical advice, and it's don't well, well just keep your eyes on Jesus and you won't have no depression. Well, that's not good advice from anybody. That's part of it, but that's not necessarily the advice I want to give. You know, depression, the word depression is really not found in the Bible, the translation I use anyway. But the five Bibles has depressed people. So you have to do the word searches and and, and if you go like my spirit or my soul, you put that in as a phrase and all this stuff comes up. I said, well, that's depression right there. Uh, Job. David. Last Sunday I did watch a, a, a guy was a little bit long-winded, but he kept my attention for 45 minutes. Angela and I both watched him. In fact, he's over here in Bethlehem. I, uh, I shouldn't say his name because then everybody flocked over. <laughs> you see, we got Jeff Lyle. I think the church is Antioch Outpost. And uh, he was talking about David. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit about David in this. But uh, anyway, uh, for the most part, Oh, also Jeremiah. Why did they call Jeremiah the weeping prophet? 
If you're crying a whole lot, isn't that based on depression? What was Jeremiah's depression about? Israel's refusal to listen to God's word, to, to repent of their idolatrous ways. And Jeremiah saw the train wreck that was happening, or the car wreck that was happening with Israel. And he pleaded and pleaded and pleaded with them, and they just they didn't hear his pleas. They didn't repent. David's depression, for the most part, was brought on by his guilt of adultery and murder in that order. The guy, the preacher I listened to, he went through that whole chapter. And I, I'm familiar with it. So I think that's part of the reason of David's depression. With Job, God allowed, <laughs> read Job chapter 1, God allowed the devil to torment Job. I can get him to break, That's not. I'm paraphrasing it a little bit, I bet you I'm getting to break, God says if you do anything you want to, you just can't kill me. First chapter of Job, look in there and see that. The devil tested him to see if he would reject God. But he didn't. But right in the middle, I think there's about 40 chapters of the book of Job. Right in the middle is Job in 17, verse 1. My spirit is broken. My days are extinguished. The grave is ready for me. Quote Job is in the midst of everything, right in the middle of it all. My spirit's broken. My days are extinguished. Or you could say my days are over. The grave is ready for me. Now, doesn't that sound like an extremely depressed person? Now, most of you, if you've had any time in church, you, you understand the story of Job. It is depressing just to read it. Sometimes maybe we need to read the Job story to let, it, to let us compare it to our own story. Say, like, ooh, you know, I ain't got nowhere near Job, but I don't, you know, I pray none of us have to go through a Job situation. But if we do, that God would give us the strength to get through it and our faith would remain strong. Amen. Job sought, sought help from his friends. There was no, as far as we know, there was no professional counselors or therapists back then. Job sought help. What do you do? I talked to my friends about it. Well, they didn't. We, we know that story. It's like throwing gas on the fire. The, the fire of depression. Boom. You know. Curse God and go on is what they tell me. In the end, Job's depression broke. And he stayed true to God. You know, my depression is not any one thing. And as I go through these, you're going to say, I'm just telling you my story. I know a lot of y'all's stories. You're dealing with much, much worse depression. Let me say this too. I have a little bit of an obsessive compulsive disorder. My mother, my, my wife is laughing. <laughs> and you know that microphone picks up real good. <laughs> For those of y'all on YouTube and Facebook, uh, my wife is behind the camera. 
today. Uh, so I'm a little bit, I, I asked Hobie to do something one time. I said, but make sure you do this. He said, man, that's a little OC, ain't it? <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, I, yeah, I guess so. You know, so, so that, you got to factor that in. Uh, you got to factor that in. Children's marital problems. One ended in divorce. And thank God the other was healed or on the road. Some of y'all I've shared details with. And, but, uh, you know, somebody told me, said, at least you have your children. So I thank God for that. But it weighs on a parent greatly, greatly. COVID, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go back. The day, the morning we were out of charm, I had. I was preparing to get ready for Larry Stephen. We got a call and said, we're getting the divorce. So it's like I was already like and got that call. So you sort of see where I was at in, in that. And then shortly after that, you know, we had you know, 200 people at Larry's funeral. And then when we find out two weeks later, oh, COVID, and it wrapped in it. It just went through a, a funeral down in Albany somewhere, and a bunch of people died. And we hear we were shaking and hugging and all that. God protected us in that situation. But COVID, what are we going to do? How are we going to do it? Don't, don't have church. You know, the, the, the denomination said, don't, don't have church. Do, do, it. Don't do that. Wear a mask. Don't wear a mask. Take this. Take that. Don't do this. Don't do that. <laughs> then finally, he said, okay. Then we can have church. How are we going to do it? How are we going to do it? Some people are more fearful than others. You know, I, hey, I understand all that. So we sit out there in the front till it just got too hot, and finally we came inside. But that's that's stressful, which leads to depression, I think, in, in my part, in, in my situation. And I almost think this is crazy. But the election of 2020 depressed me. I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. You know, inflation, disaffiliation, stress. That was very stressful. I think it was the right thing to do, but it's very stressful. It's depressing to see the denomination that we left, what it's going through, what it's becoming. Lots of funerals. I did more funerals last year than I've ever done in a year. You know, it just, just takes a little bit out of it. Now, I know I'm not the one that lost the person. I mean, y'all are suffering much more. I'm just telling you how it feels to me. Settling my next door neighbor's estate. Thank God that's over. Chronic back pain. It's never real bad, but it's never real good. I cannot stand stationary for more than about 10 or 15 minutes. My right leg starts going numb. In fact, right now it's a little bit of in my right thigh. And then within a couple of weeks or within a short period of time, two people said, since we said, you're walking like an old man. Hey, watch it. It wasn't Angela. It wasn't her. You know, I had to, and it wasn't. They didn't say those words, but that was the implication. 
And it's one person I didn't really know that well, one or the other person I knew fairly well. So I, uh, we can feel it. Yeah. Well, and that's, that's my next point. I'm, I'm feeling my age. No, I'm talking about we can feel it. You talk about it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm feeling my age. And it's like, okay, that's depressing. Pastoral stress. You know, y'all, this is an easy church. There's not many problems. But it can be stressful. And it goes back to the OCD kind of stuff. People leaving. Just all of a sudden they're gone and they really have no reason, no understanding of why. Where do we go from here? What's our next step? You know, my symptoms, I would say a general sadness that just won't go away. Not wanting to do things that I normally like to do. I tried to explain it away. I was really enjoying that. Uh, and and y'all heard me talk about it a lot, anyway, about fishing and stuff like that. I just don't care about it. And that's not like me. Frustration. Not looking forward to things. Generally, it's like, oh, wow, we're going to go do this next week. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not looking forward to it. Not, not that I won't go do it, but it's not like, oh, yeah. Outburst of anger. I started to do anger management part two because, you know, after I preached that anger management sermon, Angela said something to me that just kicked me off. And, and I got real angry. I said, go in. You know, and it was stupid. What we were arguing about. <laughs> you know, and the whole scheme of things is what does it life threatening or have to do anything with life whatsoever. So, you know, not caring, impatience, feeling spiritually dry. That's, that, that's bad. I, I hesitate to tell you that as your, quote, spiritual leader. I feel spiritually dry. Felt spiritually dry. Feeling unworthy. So how am I dealing with depression? First thing, I'm acknowledging it. I have the opportunity to stand up and tell you and to, to bear myself to you emotionally. I acknowledge it. But I'm determined to deal with it. And y'all know me, I'm a fairly determined person. I'm going to deal with it. Learn to accept what learn to accept what I can't change. That's a lot of it right there. Most of that stuff I told you about, none of that I can change. 
You know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing stuff with my back. You know, I, I, I'm exercising every morning. You know, and, and I actually feel pretty good right now. But there's some things I just can't change. So you, I mean, you have to accept it. But change what you can. There's things that I can change. And if, if there's one takeaway from this, do, and that's, that's probably it. Exercise. And I put the word more. I probably should just left exercise. You know, it, 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 it can be just get out and move around. I tell you, if you're laying there on the couch and wallowing your own, wallowing in your own pity, it's not good. Amen. It's not. Get out and enjoy God's creation. We all have nice places and homes and you know, you probably got a back porch. I've heard many of you say, just get out on the back porch. And, and you know, I, went, I, some, I have a I play place according to what the sun is, how, how the sun is doing. And the afternoon, my front of the house is sunny, so I don't sit out there too much. But anyway, I, I got out there the other day, and I, said, and I started listening to the birds. Just listening to the birds. And you have now and then you see one fly. Just listening to the birds. Nature. Watch less news. Amen. And I I watch the channel that I like. And I agree with 90% of what they say, but I don't have to be reminded day in and day out, day in and day out of the situation. Because why? I can't change that other than prayer and voting. Yeah. Amen. Now, this works for me. Watch comedy. I look, Angel and I were watching something. The other day, and we just got into a laughing fit about something. I forgot what it was. But, you, you know, sometimes just something's humorous to me. You know, what's humorous to me may not be as humorous to you or whatever, but it's something like that. Laugh a little bit. And, of course, the most important thing, pray a lot more. Pray a lot more. You know, Psalms, in many ways, is a how-to in dealing with depression. You might call it depression medicine. And again, I'm not saying quit taking medicine and just read Psalms. If you're taking medicine, take your medicine and read Psalms. Do both of them, if you're not doing one or the other. But it is, it's, a how, it's, a, it's sort of a how-to when you read through the 150 of them. Not every one of them is about how to deal with depression. Some of them are thanksgiving and all that kind of stuff. But I'm going to read, read in Psalm 40, verses 1 through 3. I tell you, I had a hard time eliminating. There was so much good stuff about how to deal with depression that I had a hard time picking the one that I think spoke to me the best. And hopefully it speaks to you. But Psalm 40, verses 1 through 3. I waited patiently. <coughs> I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. He brought me up out of the pit of destruction, out of the miry clay, and He set my feet upon a rock, making my footsteps firm. He put he and He put me. And he put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and will trust in the Lord. I don't remember what night it was. I've been Monday, Tuesday. I cried out to God.
And I felt my depression begin to lift. Is it over? Question mark, question mark. Maybe. I hope it is. But if it's not. But I, I cried out to God. And I felt something lift from me. I felt my spirit renewed. You know, I never got in the pit of destruction as David writes about in this. But I could see it. I could see it. That's the devil. It's the devil. The devil wants me to be depressed. He wants us all to be depressed. Amen? Amen. Amen. It means you're doing something right. There you go, brother. You know, God reminded me of the solid rock that I have in Christ. And that no depression can overtake me. Now, I may suffer from it for the rest of my life. It may get worse. It, I pray that it gets better. You know, Paul, I started to bring this into it, but I'll mention it. You know, Paul talked about having a thorn in his flesh. I, you know, if, if you're doing kingdom work, the devil's going to attack you. It's going to attack your family, it's other situations. And that causes depression. And what happens is, again, with me, I start focusing, oh, golly, I wish that hadn't happened. Oh, you know, and, and, and I take my eyes off of God, and I can't change that. I can't change it, accept it. It's the way it is. Some of those situations, it's the way it is. And I like this. Praising God with a new song. Folks, that's the best way, short of professional help and medication that my son may take. You feel down, you feel depressed, singing to the Lord a new song. Singing to the Lord of the earth. God is great and greatly to be praised. Singing to the Lord a new song. Singing to the Lord of the earth. We need to do that next Sunday. I started to ask you to do it this Sunday. Your choice is better than that. So, you see, praise God. Read a song. 